are going to find the domain given functions and function operations. So we're going to start with the example f, oops, f of x equals, uh, let's go x plus 5, and g of x equals, um, uh, let's do 2x plus 3. So um, when we find the domain of function operations, uh, we have to consider both f of x and g of x. And then in addition to that, um, we'll have to limit values if we end up with a denominator. So we can take my x plus 5. We know that the domain for, for f of x is all real numbers. So x is a member of all real numbers. Um, 2x plus 3 is linear, so we've got a domain here as well. Uh, x is a member of all real numbers. So if we were to uh, add f plus g, uh, if we were to multiply f times g, uh, if we were to subtract, either way, let's do g minus f, um, we're going to end up with domains of all real numbers for all three of these. So let's go ahead and do it. Um, so if we're doing f plus g of x, that means we're going to take my f of x function, x plus 5, plus 2x plus 3. And we're going to end up with 3x plus 8, which is another linear expression here. So it's another linear function. So that tells me that x is going to be a member of all real numbers. If we multiply f times g of x, uh, so we would take our x plus 5, multiplying it by 2x plus 3, distributing the x, this gives me 2x squared plus 3x, distributing the 5 gives me 10x plus 15, my product is 2x squared plus 13x plus 5. Now, we've got an all real numbers multiplied by an all real numbers. This results in a quadratic, which again gives me the domain of all real numbers. g minus f of x. So again, my g of x is 2x plus 3. I'm going to subtract the entire second function. Remember, put it in the parentheses so you don't forget that you have to distribute. This makes this 2x plus 3 minus x minus 5, which gives me an x minus 2. Again, it's linear. Real number, real number. We end up with x as a member of all real numbers. Now where this gets a little bit um, a little bit dicey is where we have um, division. So let me get rid of this. That's pretty cool, huh? Yay. All right, so if we're going to do, um, we're going to look at both f divided by g of x. And we're also going to do g divided by f of x. So the numerator it has a domain of all real numbers. The denominator has a domain of all real numbers. But by doing this division operation, we're putting g of x in the denominator. And remember that that's one of our conditions for which uh, we have to limit the domain because we cannot divide by zero. So my entire denominator, 2x plus 3, cannot be equal to anything that's going to give me zero. So looking for these values, we would subtract the 3 from both sides, leaving me with 2x equals negative 3. Divide by 2 and we have x is equal to negative 3 over 2. Remember, we're trying to limit the values that make this undefined. 
So we are going to set our domain as x cannot be equal to negative 3 over 2. Now this is just the reverse. So instead of the f of x in the numerator, we have g of x in the numerator. So 2x plus 3 divided by x plus 5. Now there's nothing to simplify here, but we've got a different value in the denominator. So just like we did with the 2x plus 3, we, we need to account for the values of x that are going to make x plus 5 equal 0. And that's going to be that negative 5. So we need to remember to limit by domain by not allowing negative 5.